with me. Okay, I'm a third grade teacher. Good evening. Thank you very much. I'm Donna Maxey, and I'm getting your attention. We're starting a little early because we have a newcomer's introduction. And so if you've already seen it, please go to sleep or be quiet or eat or something like that. But for those people who are brand new and have not seen it, we'd really love for them to be able to hear it. So, Mr. Carlos, roll it. I'm Donna Maxey. I am the founder director of Race Talks, and we're really excited to see you here. I just wanted to do quite, kind of an introduction about what Race Talks is about. We're doing this for newcomers. We're excited that you're here. Race Talks was started out of um, when I was asked to speak at a McMenamin's History Pub, and the topic was urban renewal, urban removal. Anyway, in your brochure here, we have several things. You might want to take your brochure and look at it. Be flexible and fluid about the schedule. It does change. There's also the Jefferson High School. Um, we have Race Talks the first week of the month at Jefferson High School. And if you're interested in being a part of a dialogue group, you can fill this out and leave this form. There should be a brown envelope on your table. Tear this off and leave it in the envelope, and we will get in touch with you about dialogue groups. We're working on those right now. If you turn to the other side of the brochure, there is, um, we have rules. We have the race talks ground rules. And um, we really try to encourage people to follow these rules. And they're important that people feel safe being here. I've had people of color who have said, this is the first time I've ever told a white person how I really feel. And I've had white people who have said, this is the first time that I was able to talk about race and not worry about putting my foot in my mouth. I feel safe to talk, I feel safe that I will be accepted and I won't be beat up for, for saying or asking what seems like an obvious and stupid question. So that's really important. So what we encourage people to do is to listen to each other with curiosity, respect differences, agree to disagree. You don't have to agree with everything somebody says. You can agree that that's their opinion. I don't agree with Rush Limbaugh, but he has a right to speak his opinion. Speak from the self and, not, and, and from the heart. It means when you're speaking, don't talk about, I know somebody who, either it's you and you were involved with the person or, you know, speak from your own experience, not someone else's. Respect confidentiality. Now, because you're involved in these discussions, you have a right to go out and share the discussion that happened at your table. But what we're asking you to do is if you do share something that someone else has said, to not give their name, to not give their location. Contribute honestly and positively. That's all we can ask anybody to do. And assume positive intent. Even if somebody says something and you, and you feel like you want to roll your eyes and say, how could you be so stupid? Assume that they, they really had best intentions when they, did, when they said what they said. Be open to new ideas and relax and enjoy. Uh, one of the reasons that we have, have it here at McMinimins so that we can have food and drink. When I was thinking about how to put this together, the thing that I thought about was, wow, we need to have some place where people can drink and have food because it's hard to be contentious over food to get indigestion. So we want, hey, you guys, laugh. Ooh, this is exciting. So, so we want you to relax. Uh, McMinimins is our sponsor, and uh, we want to make sure that they are seeing some results with their cash register too. So just eat and drink yourself. Sick. Follow-up activities, uh, just for fun. Those, the follow-up activities, these are the things that we're trying to get people to do. One of the things that folks do a lot of times is they'll go to a lecture and they'll feel so good about the lecture and then they go home and do the same things they've always done. And what we want folks to do is something different. Don't go home to your community where you don't know people of color or you don't know white people. Go home and get to, know, you know, get to know the people who are at your table. We have little cards, little colored cards at the table for those folks who say, well, I don't have a business card. So give people your number. Get together. Have coffee. And it says, go out for, uh, just for fun, go out and make friends with a person in your own ethnic group. 
I moved to an area in Portland that I had taught in, and there were kids of color, lots of kids of color at my school, so I just assumed there would be lots of people in the neighborhood who were of color, and boy, was I wrong. And the folks who were there were not very friendly. Everybody was white, they weren't very friendly, and I thought, gosh, these people aren't very friendly at all. So, of course, in my usual manner, after I'd been there a year, I got a couple of the neighbors that were friendly to help me throw one of those uh, block parties. So we threw one of those, we passed out flyers four blocks wide, 10 blocks long, and about 50 people came. And what amazed me is that some of those people had lived in that neighborhood for 28 years and didn't know each other. So what I'm inviting people to do is go make friends with someone in your own ethnic group. Let me ask a question. How many of you know the people on your block, three houses to your left, the three houses to your right, and three in front of you? Now, if you know nine houses, and when I say no, meaning you know them, you've been in their house, you got their phone number, how many people know that? Look around the room. Go make friends with somebody in your neighborhood, okay? <laughs> we got one per Let's hear it for Susie. Let's hear it for Susie. Susie does. How long have you lived there, Susie? 30 years. 30 years. And I bet you some, there's some other people here who've lived in their home 30 years and don't know folks either. This is part of the thing. I remember when we were kids, you know, your parents never worried about you. We didn't have to come in until it was dark. Because we, wherever we were, we were with people we knew. So get to know your neighbors. Talk to the people who are around you. And when you do, don't discuss race. If, you, if it's a person of color, or if you're a person of color and it's a white person, don't talk about race, just talk about what you have in common, you know? Things like, gee, that's a nice shirt you have on. Or you just never know what, where it's going to lead in a discussion. You never know what you'll find out from people when you talk to them. You might develop a relationship from it. So, um, and the question is, how many people of color, if you are white, and how many white people and people of other ethnicities are on your speed dial? Now, what I call speed dial is those are your people that you call up and say, hey, I just got a promotion, let's go have a drink. Hey. Me and the boyfriend broke up, need to talk. You know, those people you call at three o'clock in the morning. And you say, who can I call and talk to? How many people from different ethnic groups are on your speed dial? And if they're not, the question is why not? There are a couple of premises that we have here at Race Talks, and there's a great book that I'd love for you to read. It's called Courageous Conversations in Race. It is a part of the foundation that I used in helping to put together Race Talks. And one of the things that they talk about in Courageous Conversations with Race is that we make the assumption, we do talk about race and white is a race, and we make the assumption that white people have privilege. And a lot of white people would say, I don't have privilege, I work my butt off. Well, yes, you do work your butt off. But what you don't know is that people of color work harder, and they have to. And, um, and to help you kind of understand that, Think of yourself as a fish. You wouldn't ask a fish, how's the water? Fish don't even know they're in water. Just like white people don't know that they have privilege. But I'm a fish too. But somebody threw me on the dock. And every so often I get to jump in the water when I get a degree or I get a promotion or something great happens. I get to jump in the water and I'm like, wow, is this what it feels like? This is great, I'm loving this. And then next thing I know, somebody snatches me out, throws me back up on the dock, and I'm up there gasping for air. So it's not that people, white people don't work hard, because they do. And one of the things that um, really happens is that I think of life as being like a 100 meter race, and poor white people start at zero at the starting line, all the way up to the Rothschilds who start at 97. Those are the people who sold arms during World War II to both sides, to the Axis and the Allies, so they were making theirs no matter who. So people have different levels of privilege that they get to exercise. People of color start back behind that starting line, back to African Americans who are back at minus 50, and you say, why, why African Americans back at minus 50? Well, 
we're back at minus 50 because we're the most maligned group here in the, in the United States. And if you stop and think about it, I mean, think about it. So anyway, and when we're back there, we're blindfolded, one leg tied behind us carrying a piano, and the gun goes off. And we wind up either slightly behind, even, or slightly ahead. And the question is, how do you manage to do that when you've started so far behind? And it's because you know you have to work harder. And I, sometime I'm gonna make a film of this because I did this with my kids in my classroom. And it was the most amazing thing I've ever seen that it came out just like what I'm sharing with you. So sit back, relax, enjoy, and uh, we, will t we will have a wonderful discussion afterwards. Thank you all for coming, and we're really excited that you're here. I just got accused of looking at it like I've never seen it before, but you know, how, how many of you know what you look like when you talk? <laughs> So anyway, welcome for those people who just came in. I'm Donna Maxey, founder director of Race Talks. And please, there are seats all over, fill in. Um, and one of the things I'm gonna say is that when we finish watching the film, we're gonna want people to break up. We have the honor to have so many young people here tonight. How many students are here? Y young students, like junior high, high school. <laughs> important that they be in these discussions at the tables because you will get an earful <coughs> when you talk to young people. It is, um, I don't like hanging out with old folks. <laughs> You're not as much fun as the young folks. So uh, just a couple of things to remind you. We have participants sign in sheets. Please make sure you sign in so we know who's here. Um, we can put you on the mailing list. This paper at the in the little carrier is for taking notes. There's brochure, take the brochure home. We do not have enough films. If you look at the brochure, we don't have enough films for this year. There's TBAs all over the place. We are looking for folks who have of color who have made films. We need films of, by and about people of color, and preferably from Portland and Oregon. So if you know someone who has done that, please come up and, and um, let me know. Or on the front of the brochure is my phone number and email, have them get in touch. So we're, we're getting down to our last films here, so come on folks. Um, also there's an evaluation, and please fill out the evaluation. There are a lot of personal questions about things that I really could care less about, but funders like to know those things, so please put it on there. And we'll talk later about whether you have a facilitator. How many trained facilitators, trained race facilitators are here tonight? I don't see a, but a couple of hands. Okay, so you guys are going to be doing this discussion on your own. There are seats up here at the front so you don't have to stand at the back. There are seats all over. If you have some seats at your table, would you please raise your hand so folks can see that you have seats? Okay. All right, the other thing is that, in case you're wondering, tonight's topic is the screening of lessons in uh, basketball and war. So this is the film. If, if they're not supposed to be here, then go home. No, don't go home. All right, and we have a couple of other things going on. Our, um, if you're a teacher, make sure you sign up for the continuing education units. We're working on getting continuing units for other professions, too. So that's kind of where we are on that one. Uh, next month's race talks, we have the community police forum that we're doing with the police. And um, the next one is Monday, March 28th at Cleveland High School in the cafeteria. That's 34 Southeast, 3400 Southeast 28th Avenue. And there will be light snacks and um, and there's full chair access behind the school, so please come. And what we want you to do is tell the police what you think about the job they're doing, what they're doing right, what they're doing that needs to improve, and what you're gonna do to help make that all happen. Um, additionally, a couple other quick business things. The 17th of, you didn't say when, 17th of what month? Hello, hello. <coughs> 
Okay, there's a White Privilege Conference in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, April 14th through 17th uh, of this year. And if you want to know more about it, go to whiteprivilegeconference.com. I understand it was super. Ra wave your hand back there at the back. I see the lady waving her hand frantically. That's her. Go ask her. She knows all about it. She had a great time and her church is going. So please do that. Please take the brochures with you. Also, uh, we have two wonderful speakers, um, Ron Bork, who is the director, and Kevin Bacon, not, not Kevin that Bacon. Kevin Bacon, <laughs> but Kevin Bacon. Listen, I didn't put principal on there. Kevin Bacon was the principal of Portland Public Schools. I didn't put that on the first advertisement I put out. People went crazy. <laughs> Kevin Bacon's coming. <laughs> yes, he is. He's here now. <laughs> so um, there are, uh, Ron has, copies of videos of Lessons of Basketball and War on sale tonight for $17, or you can go to the website and pay more. So, if you want one, get it from Ron tonight. Now, what I want you to be doing tonight when you're sitting at your table is eyeballing the people that sit at that table with you, because what I want you to do, all right, students, I need you to be paying attention over here. I'm a teacher, I'm a teacher. Okay, y'all, you know how it is. Because I need you to be paying attention because I need you to do this. You're going to help these older people, and you need to know what to do. So, you know how people always say, I give you my number except I don't have a card? Well, now you do. So all these little cards are for you to put your number on, and you're going to be finding somebody at the table that you think you'd like to get to know. And the whole idea is to find somebody who's a different ethnicity, different age. Figure out who it is and get together with them. Now, if you pick a student as your person you want to get together with, then you have to invite their parent, too. So, what you're going to do is you're going to fill out one of these cards, put your name, your email address, and your phone number on it, and then, come here for a second, please, ma'am. Should I choose this lovely lady that I've eyeballed her? She's going to put her name and stuff on there. And then we're going to exchange those. And then, when it comes time for the drawing, then we're going to both put our name, just Donna and Kathy, who doesn't have a name tag. Shame on you, Kathy. <laughs> so, Donna and Kathy are going to put their first and last names on here, and then it goes in the drawing for a gift certificate to come to McMinimins for free and get to know each other. So, be eyeballing people across the table to see if you'd like to do that. And someone wrote last time that that was very uncomfortable to have to do that, that that felt forced. You may sit down. But even though you don't have a name to it, I still love her. It's okay. So someone said it was forced. Here she is right here. Here she is. Someone said it felt forced and false. Well, it's always forced and false when you're meeting new people. There's no such thing as doing it, you know, smoothly. So it's just a way to get to know folks. That's all it is. So without further ado, I would like to introduce our stars of the show, Ron Bork, director, and Kevin Bacon. Mr. Bacon, you come out and come out and do a couple of dance moves for us. <laughs> so. Uh, what, what was that? Footloose? Was Footloose. that the film? Yeah. Wasn't he wonderful in that film? <laughs> so, anyway, we're getting ready to start the film. Sit back, relax. Um, there are, I don't see any, there's one, one or two chairs up front here. And, um, hey, thanks for coming. We're really glad you're here. And see you in about an hour. Oh, and I forgot to mention, we will be going over because all the stuff that happens. So, don't go home, stay for the discussion. Hi. I heard that there was a war before I was born. Instead of fighting about for no reason, have a peaceful life instead of fighting about no reason or something.
three months until their first game. This is how you move. Your feet don't cross. You go forward, you go backward. I want to play the basketball team because it's good for me. I wanted to learn more basketball and play hard. because I like to pass the ball and shoot and well not double jumping. Hey, hold the position, get down in it. Hold it, bend down more. Okay, it should burn. Hold it, stay down, nobody move. Okay, 30 seconds. My fans are all of them are on the team. This way, this way, this way, shuffle. During the last half of the season, team tensions were reaching a boiling point. A disagreement on the playground quickly exploded into a full-on feud. Go ahead, put it on. Put it on. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Just put it on. With much of the year's progress in jeopardy, Kevin immediately called a closed-door meeting with his team. The barometer for me to get involved was when it started um, spilling over into the classroom, spilling over into the hall, spilling over into practice, and potentially into the game. People call me barred, I get angry. Like, shut up, what the guys are barred? They use words in their culture that are that are just the ultimate disrespect. Almost like, like if we were to spit on someone in our culture, that would I mean, it would make it hard for us to bury the hatchet anytime soon. <laughs> and so they go to that level real quick. I want you so much in my heart to be a part of this team. Part of being a team is knowing that when you're in the games together, that you can depend on each other. It's fun, you can play with my friend, like I like our family. Like Mr. Baby, he helped us to play basketball. He was a nice coach. He was the best. made um, 2009 basically but um, it's sort of an ongoing process the editing lasted for several years part of it was due to lack of funding and raising funds <clears throat> when we made the film I was able to talk Kevin into allowing our cameras into the school and we just hit the ground running and didn't really take a breath but after those seven or eight months uh, all of a sudden we had hundreds of hours of footage and what to do with that. So there were several years after that, shaping it into the form that you now see. Do you have an update for the girls? I personally don't. I've got a couple, but uh, they're really not public. Um, you know, without their permission, I don't really want to be telling personal stories about them. But most of them went on to Portland Community College, 
which is a wonderful, wonderful institution. And I, I haven't really found out that much about them in the last several months. Okay. All right. Oh, there you have one. What's your name? Jessica. I like Jessica. <laughs> She's a wonderful person. And whoever else comes up will be a wonderful person. <laughs> Hi. Um, thank you very much for that film. I was really happy to bring my daughter here. We homeschool, so not only was it great to see, you know, an immigration story, but also, you know, a mainstream school story. My question is, um, we got to see some of the transition of the kids. We got to hear a lot of their dialogue. I'm kind of curious about how the parents might have, and we saw you know, a couple of the parents, um, but I'm curious to what type of, how they acclimated and, and how you know, this basketball team tra helped them transition. And, and maybe you could speak a little bit about the growth and the changes that you witnessed in the families and their interaction with their community? Well, I would, I would first, great question, and I would first point out that my first year there as principal, it, it became clear that, that, you know, the, the apartment complex that they lived in that was sponsored by Catholic Charities had a community center and so we, we took advantage of that by taking the school to the community center. So we did a lot of parent meetings in that facility. And so then when it came time for the basketball team, we had really built a relationship with, with the parents, the staff um, at the residential complex. And so, um, um, so in doing that, it was, um, it became known to me that that was really transitional housing. And so um, that residential complex um, for a lot of families was a stepping stone to mostly um, um, housing that was, that was either east in the suburbs or west in the suburbs. And so that particular year, we didn't lose a lot of families. But as, you know, I was at Haas for a total of six years as the principal and um, there were a lot of families that moved out and and up, so to speak, um, from you know the apartments to 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 houses, and so there was some transition that went on for for the families as well as well as the students. Then I would say for the students, the transition, you know, we were really excited. I mean, none of the girls had the confidence or even kind of saw a possibility of playing playing sports. I mean, it just wasn't even. Um, a part of the culture or any kind of, I mean, if anything, it was sort of um, banned, right? So to open that door for them and to see that turn into some of the girls playing high school basketball, going out for track, um, certainly I feel like kind of a confidence just in, in life and you saw the community that would turn out for those games, uh, an incredible boost just in I think them feeling apart, and um, the other thing that happened was the we we did the team again the next year, but it, I didn't coach. I found another coach because it was it was a lot. It, the shots really didn't capture. Well, they captured my changing, ever changing hairstyle, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, um, and so it's always kind of funny to to watch it and kind of think back on that. But uh, you know, literally. I think there was one or two shots where I, I was still in my, my suit pants and shirt and it was untucked and no tie and it'd be right after school, we walk right into the gym and we start practicing and, um, you know, the, um, the young ladies put in a lot of work because we started, you know, the first game was January 1st and we started at the end of the previous school year and they showed up, you know, three days a week in the summer. We practice over the holidays, um, you know, we just put in, they put in a lot of time and, um, and, and it also, in that second year, as I was saying, I get, we've got a new coach, but some of the girls 
started playing for the, the regular, they went out for the regular school teams, and that was a huge step in the transition, especially they started making friends kind of outside that, that group that they were hanging with. And that was important, especially when they went on to high school, to know that, the, that there was a level of acceptance that was happening um, for them in the, in the school culture and that that, that, that would continue. So, um, so I hope that answers that. Anyone else? Oh, come on, come on. students for coming. Thank yeah. you so much. Okay, so the couple other people come over here. This is what the microphone's for. We only have four minutes left. Hurry up. I was wondering if like a rock star. Then, uh, I was wondering if there was any transference between the kids learning how to get along and with the parents, where the woman said she would rather see her daughter play naked than so something I assume that was for a different tribe or uh, I don't know what they call it, but did the kids relaxing at all transition into their parents relaxing or those around that was noticing? Well, I... I we just looked at each other yeah. and kind of said no, and <laughs> I, I, it really took the film and and Ron, you know, it took the film and me seeing the film and and, and I'd never been a part of a film before, and so, so I, you know, I had really no idea all the footage he was collecting by going into the homes, interviewing the girls individually. <laughs> the other coaches' perspectives, the parent volunteers' perspectives. So when I first saw the film and saw it all come together, I really, up until that point, really didn't fully grasp the, um, the Civil War that was going on and the tribal conflict and how deep it ran, right? And, um, and so, man, a basketball team to overcome those years and years of, of strife, um, you know, you could see what we were up against. And, and at the time, I really couldn't feel it while we were in the middle of it. It just seemed like middle school girls gone wild. <laughs> and, um, and that's the other thing to point out. I mean, there's a layer of just going through adolescence that um, anybody in here that's had, you know, middle school daughters or been around middle schoolers, you know, that. Um, drama, boy and girl, is is just part of the whole growing up process. So you got that layered on top of this huge tribal deal, and then the the parents, to the degree that we couldn't really get through to them, um, it just kept the kids apart. But it was odd because, as was pointed out in the film, they almost did everything together, which sort of exacerbated. I mean, it was like, okay, why are you guys? Hey, why are you even? Why do you walk to school together? But there was the pressure of being Somali, but then yet we got the tribal difference, but yet we need to hang together, but yet we don't like each other. And, and then this guy is trying to get us to play basketball and what's going on. So that, that's how I would kind of answer that. I might add, I was curious, while the, while the film was playing, I picked up my phone and uh, Googled race and got the Merriam-Webster dictionary definition of race and skin color is not mentioned. Uh, a family, tribe, people, or nation belonging, belonging to the same stock. A class or kind of people unified by shared interests, habits, or characteristics. And way down in number three of the definitions is a category of humankind that shares certain distinctive physical traits. 
but they don't even mention skin color. And that's, the, I think, the one thing that we first go to more than anything else when we think of somebody as another race. And that's one thing, working on this project over a year's time, it really opened me up to the importance of many different things. And skin color obviously is huge, at least in this country it really is huge, but you get within a particular group such as in Somalia where they came from, uh, everybody had the same basic skin color, but there were all these other ways to define who the other was and who we don't like and who we like. Uh, the Bantu were the lower class. They were slaves at one time in Somalia. Uh, the, so the ethnic Somalis were the upper class. And we even see, saw some of that play out on the team. Um, it didn't make it into the film, um, but at the very beginning, there was one girl who was ethnic Somali, and she didn't really want to play with these other girls. They weren't good enough for her. So I think that's one thing to think about as we talk tonight is really what is race and how do we define it? Because to me it's far broader than just the color of our skin. And boy, humans sure know how to be, how to carry prejudice. Okay, we have one more question and we're past our time, but we're going to take his question. Uh, I just want to say thank you so much. Uh, this has been a wonderful work. Uh, um, I can speak to the challenge of bringing those from the same uh, tribe or families together and do such an important work in a school. Um, I just had a, one quick question, and you started the question that I was about to ask you is about your skin color, and I'm talking to Mr. Bacon. How, how, factor, how was, that, was that significant, a factor, in, 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 in dealing with the challenges in the daily games, uh, in the weekly games? Uh, how was it, a, was it a successful, and if so, how? Uh, was it really important? Did it help you at all? Your skin color, though. Oh, uh, my skin color? Yeah. Yeah, I, for sure. I mean, I, I think, um, you know, there, there was, uh, my winning personality was. That was <laughs> first and foremost. I mean, there, 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 there was a connection that really, there was a connection that really ran deep. Just, you know, the playfulness that, that, that we were able to develop with each other. Um, but certainly I think that um, um, me being of African descent, you know, meant a lot to them and that I took an interest, you know, in them and, and, and we spent a lot of time together, you know, and I kind of pointed that out and that, and that more than anything is, is um, what made the difference. I think that um, it's funny that the it, it took a little while for them to grasp that the season was over. They showed up after that last game and all the drama that you saw. So, and, and that's the other thing I love about this film is that it wasn't tied up in a nice bow. You know, it it, um, it really, you know, that, that last game, that was a lot. I mean, me trying to really keep spirits up and get them excited about a pizza party and trophies, you know, and they really had no concept of that either. And, <laughs> You know, a little, a little more background is, you know, kind of in our culture, when I grew up playing sports, the coaches would make you run when, when they got upset. And I would try to make them run, and they just loved it. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's run again, let's run again, let's run again, let's run again. And, um, um, so I, I, you know, the relationship was more, more important than anything. And, and I know we're short on time. I just uh, see a lot of faces from Portland Public Schools and, and of course, my, my new school now, Boise Elliott Humboldt, I know is in the house. Thank you for being here. All and, right. uh, <laughs> and of course, my family's here, my wife and youngest daughter, and so appreciate them being here. And um, so. The Academy is starting to <laughs> <laughs> and, and something that was not mentioned, but is a major piece to this, especially with junior high girls. It did not hurt that Mr. Bacon was male, and it did not hurt that he was not real rough on the eyes. So uh, that is a factor. That is a factor. Listen, I, I'd rather fight dogs than to fight with junior high girls. I, tell you I did discipline at the middle school level, I want to tell you. Okay.
All right, so I put my glasses somewhere, and I'm going to pretend I can see. So um, we have a discussion group now, and one of the things that I like to tell folks is you cannot discuss race without having people of color in your discussion group. So if you are an all-white group or you are an all-people-of-color group, then you need to mix up and get other places. And some folks are not comfortable with that, and I'm sorry. <laughs> Too bad, so sad. That's what we're here to do, is hard work. So we need to mix it up. I mean, it's kind of like, how can you talk about childbirth when it's all men? You know? Hello? Did you catch that? Okay, all right, so you got my point. All right, so, how many facilitators do we have here tonight? I see, stand up please, facilitators. I see one, two, three. Three facilitators. Okay, so y'all are on your own tonight. And there are instructions on the back side here. Facilitators, would you please go pick a table? And um, the um, it's how to conduct your own small group discussion. So there are directions on the back side here. And please make sure those folks who are leaving that you filled out an evaluation and leave it on the back table or on the table where you're sitting. Also, please feel free to drop some money into our love donation. So we'll be doing that later. So we're going to go ahead and discuss. And okay, y'all. Hey, whoo! Hold on. Hold on. Because we haven't gotten our running orders yet. Okay. Boy, this is worse than junior high. You. I'm telling you. Okay, so right now the time is what? If I could get to the right time, I'd be dangerous. Okay, it is 824, so we're going to spend the next 40 minutes talking in our groups. You've got instructions on how to do it. There are some suggested questions. Excuse me, excuse me, please. There are some suggested questions at, in yellow at the bottom on the back side. And if you do not want, you can discuss all those questions, none of those questions. You can do them in order, out of order, whatever you want to do. We just, the, what's important is the discussion, not how it's led. So pick a person. Okay, I'm going to pick a person for you. Whoever is sitting at the top of the table, see where this lady's sitting right here? Raise your hand so they can see. Whoever's sitting in that position, you're the person who is the discussion leader. Okay, so you've got the job to do. So go ahead and I'll see you back here in 40 minutes. Thanks. You've been checking people out all evening, so here's what I want you to do. We're going to come pretty soon and take your cards. So we're going to have a drawing for race talks. So you can come to McMinimins and have a meal. Now, I think we have enough ethnic mix here that it doesn't have to be just all white folks, because sometimes we have them and all we have is pretty much white folks. So I want you to get mixed up tonight. Find somebody else of a different ethnicity. So I'll be back in four minutes. Thank you so much for coming. Hope to see you next month and uh, later this month at Cleveland High School. And I want you oh, fill out your evaluations. And McMinimins does not mind if you stay here and talk a little while. Now, when I get all cleaned up, y'all got to go. You don't have to go home, but you do have to leave here once we get all cleaned up. So sit and talk as, until we're all cleaned up. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, Dr.